can find to put on the truck. And then between here and there, the fuel pump quit working. So, what a pain in the butt. All right, so I guess we're gonna have to address this fuel pump. Somewhere it's not getting power. Let's get this thing back to the shop so we can work on it. So I have put in this inline 12 volt pump. My goal is just to get to the shop and off the side of the road. So I'm going to hot wire this pump to a jump pack, stick it in here, try to start it and just get it back to the shop. That's, that's the priority number one. And then we will wire this directly into the key. For the moment it's running. So it was fuel, was a fuel pump. All right, quick backstory. So I bought this thing pretty much sight unseen. I made the guy an offer on Facebook Marketplace. He was pretty far away and uh, he accepted. So I went out and looked at it. It started, ran for like 15 minutes. Everything seemed good. The dump worked, the brakes worked. Uh, we moved it back and forth, unfortunately, because it wasn't on the road and the size of the truck, it's we couldn't take it down the road to test it. So I was kind of going on limited information. I went back a couple of days later to pick this thing up uh pulled out on the road and it just would not run it would not stay running it had no power it would run and idle but it, as soon as you hit the gas it would just die uh, i made it uh, about 0.6 miles down the road and that was all she had in it i ended up calling the previous owner and asking him if he would pull me back to the spot where uh, i originally basically bought the thing uh, and we uh, pulled this thing back home with his half ton chevy silverado did a great job and i really appreciate him for helped me out he didn't have to do that uh but he was nice enough to to pull me back down i would have been in a, in a world of hurt without him so i appreciate that uh so i went back a couple days later with my buddy we cleaned the carburetor out it was pretty disgusting probably what happened is that it ran fine just sitting there it had been sitting uh for several years i think prior to this and it just knocked some stuff loose when we moved it around and took it down the road and it progressively got worse so we cleaned the carburetor out got the thing running good Drove it around a little bit in the little area that we had back and forth kind of thing, testing everything out as much as we can test it out in that small area. And everything was good. So I decided to have a low boy pick this up. I had to drive it back, back across the city. It was a little over an hour and a half from my house and I didn't really want to get stuck in a city with this thing. Uh, a tow bill for this is probably looking at 800 to a thousand dollars. I didn't really want to spend that kind of money uh, just to tow the thing back. Got a chain down and headed home. We got back to my shop and it started for a brief second and then died uh, i was like oh maybe it's out of gas dump some more gas in there nothing and quickly realized that the fuel pump is not running at all so if you don't know when a truck with air brakes doesn't have air pressure the brakes are on so the brakes are fail to on uh, and the air pressure fights against the spring to release them so that you can drive down the road. If you don't have any air pressure, you can't move the truck. So I had to try to air it up off the side port, which sort of worked, and then pull it off of my truck, which sort of worked. And then the final win of the day was I had the driver of the low boy stand in the engine compartment with a can of starting fluid, and he kept the truck running so I could back it off of the road, off of his trailer, and then the rest of the way off the road until I could get a fuel pump and drive it back here so good times let's get that fuel pump wired in and i think this thing will be ready to go we got this wired in i was able to wire it into the old harness which confirms that that fuel pump was bad uh, since i still had 12 volts down there so let's fire this thing up and see if it runs and run good it does. That's exciting. Next thing I wanna do is vacuum the cab out cause it is pretty disgusting and we should also change the oil in this cause maybe a tune up, maybe we should do that too.
So the range box was just stuck in like second, I think. Uh, looks like something got overextended. I don't know if it had to do something with the diff lock when I turned that on. I guess lesson learned, no more messing with the diff lock at all. Cool, an old first aid kit. If I had to guess, this was a fuel gauge at one time. Got some 50 weight motor oil, got a fire extinguisher. It does not work anymore. 50 weight and radiator cleaner. Ah, cool. I'll throw this in right now. The oil, not the radiator cleaner. Let's vacuum this out. So it's kind of a miserable day to be doing this. Like I'm super glad for the rain because it has been so dry lately and you know that makes it tough for all the farmers and stuff, but not the greatest day to be working outside on a truck. That's looking a lot nicer. At least it's cleaned out in here. I put some uh, spray up here on the dash, some detailing stuff. Uh, doesn't really take off 30 years of grease, but it makes it look a little bit better. Okay, so for the moment being, everything on this is working. Let's do a quick walk around tour. So this is a 1972 Ford 800. Uh, it has a gas motor. It has the 534C cubic inch motor. So it's the 800, not the 8000. It's the same chassis, just with a gas motor. This has air brakes. So uh, you would need a CDL to drive this. It is gross vehicle is uh, right around 48,000. It has a dump bed that all works with the manual latches in the back. The cab's pretty simple. It has a five by four gearbox. So there is four on this stick. That's the range box, and then it is a five-speed transmission, which is a little bit interesting to drive. Shows 10,000 on the clock, likely that's rolled over once. And it has an air conditioner. On the back here, we have three asphalt chutes. Uh, I tried them briefly, they don't work. I, I don't really care. Uh, the tailgate swings from the top, so you release the latch up front and it'll swing open if you're, so you can tailgate gravel or just dump, whatever. Uh, it has a pinnel hitch. Uh, there is some wiring for, there's a plug for trailer brakes. Does not look like there's any air back here. Not a big deal since I don't have a trailer, but all the lights do work, which is nice. It's always nice when I don't have to get into someone else's wiring. The tires are used. At the end of the day, there's still a ton of life left in those tires for what I'm gonna be doing. Oh, uh, the glass is good, the dump works good. I don't know, what else is there? It's a cool truck. The issues I've kind of had, I think, are just maybe from it sitting so long. But hopefully we can get a bunch of them ironed out and uh, have this thing rolling down the road. This truck did not come with an air pressure gauge, which is kind of annoying because then you just have to guess when the brakes are ready. But then I got to looking down in here and what do you know? There it is. I have one tank that's at zero and then the other one is still at 50. So one tank holds air. So that bezel was pretty much completely destroyed. So I just pulled that out and bent those tabs over. It will hold, not permanent, unless it works, I guess. Out on the maiden voyage here. Pretty much flat to the floor. It'll be like 50. And overdrive and overdrive, which is a really double overdrive. today's project is going to be this tree here so a buddy of mine wants to take it out so that he can park his camper 
back here. So we're gonna take out this bush and this tree. Uh, I just measured that with the drone. It's about 52 feet tall. And I got my buddy coming over. We're gonna climb, actually, he's probably gonna climb. And we're just gonna cut it off from the top down and uh, you know, just, just in small pieces so it's manageable. And I have the dump truck here to haul it away. So this is kind of the first time we're using this thing. Uh, it seemed to do all right on the road. So let's get right to work. When you're good, you're good. You see this? You know what this is the hinge? Hinge wood, yeah. Yep. And see how I left more hinge on this yep. side to pull it because of my... Yeah, lucky it turned out that way, Because huh? <laughs> my wedge wasn't spot on. Yep. There you go. Nice job, man, he dropped it right on the wood. Yep. Right where he wanted. Yeah. <laughs> 
Well, I'm calling that job done. Got that tree all cleaned up, taken down, loaded in the dump truck. Looks good. working. I think we're going to have to take the gate off. Whoops. I'll have to find that later. Is there anything cooler than dumping a load of something? I don't know, anything. I don't know why, I just love dump trucks. Let's push this up into my berm. Let's get this thing started and up to the shop so we can uh, change the plugs and do an oil change on this. All right, so I've been messing with this thing for a little while. Uh, I 
basically traced it back to the pump was not pumping anything. So I think what I want to do here is I want to drop the tank. I'd like to see what's going on with the factory pump and see if we can get that thing working or why it stopped. Maybe it's just dirty or something. <laughs> I don't even see it, but that tank just sprung a leak. All right, I'm gonna try to drain that quick. We got it out. So right there's the pinhole. It just rusted through basically, which I can fix that. It's just a little bit frustrating. I'm pretty confident that gas is lower than about here. So let's pop this off. Let's pull that out and see what's going on. Let's go see if we can test this, possibly fix it. So I don't know exactly how this connection works. I assume it works something similar to the light bulbs in vehicles where you push this in and then turn it. That engages the ground and then the hot wire comes through here. So I guess let's test this and see if this pump actually is dead. Well, I was at it. I went ahead and cleaned up the other end of the pump, this connection. So we'll put this back together and uh, test this pump. Got the ground hooked up to that stud. That's sounding good, it works. Sounds a little bit, a bit rough. Uh, I'm gonna shoot some lube down in there to try to clean that out. Well, curiosity is what they say killed the cat. I just took this off just cause I'm kind of curious. Uh, I don't know if this is a magnet, uh, but this spins real nice. There is a little bit of a kind of metal on metal, I guess, sound. I just shot some chain lube in there to maybe take that away. Got it all cleaned up, put back together. Let's give it a test here real quick. That's sounding a lot better. And with this put back on, let's test this one last time to make sure that there's no connection issues in here. Let's put this back in. Got a fresh length of hose. We'll put this on and then we'll get this installed. Obviously, since there's gas in there, I can't weld it. The right way to do this would be to patch this tank. The next best solution is the right stuff, a license plate, and a piece of stainless steel. I know, somebody's gonna lose their mind over this. Now, I'm gonna say with 
95% certainty that that will seal that hole. The right stuff is rated for gas. It's rated to return to use immediately. Uh, I've used this in a ton of applications with oil and gas and it is it's by far the best sealer I've ever used. I was actually watching uh, a no nonsense know-how video. He used that stuff on the bottom of the boat and uh, with no issues. So it should be able to keep gasoline in. While that's drying, I'm gonna go ahead and clean these off. Let's figure out a solution for this fuel filter. And with some spare parts from my junk drawer, I can make this work. That's definitely gas rated Teflon and the right barb. You know what, that just might work. So I've had this tank up here for about five minutes and there is no signs of leaking. So I'm gonna call that fixed. Tank's back in. I'm gonna wire up the pump to the key switch again. We'll check back in a couple days to see if that thing is still dry and not leaking. And before I go make everything permanent here, we're gonna test the pump to make sure I have it wired correctly. So just kick the key. Check that we have flow here. So here's what's happening. I the fuel pump is running. I let it run for like five minutes and nothing came out of that hose down there. And I poured gas down backwards, thinking maybe it needed a prime. And then I said, well, maybe it needs the draw from the carburetor to help pull it up. I rolled the engine over like twice and the fuel pump died, just quit. Now Nothing, I got nothing, no fuel pump, nothing. I checked the fuel pump fuse under the dash, it's not blown. So I don't know what's going on. If it's like something's loose and when the engine, this is the same thing that happened when I brought it home. So I'm gonna have to do a little research on this to figure out what's going on. I also need to figure out why it's not actually pumping fuel. I think the problem's in the switch. I'm gonna look into that a little bit farther. I might just replace that switch if I can find one cheap enough. And I got the new ignition here. Let's throw this in and see if that pit in that intermittent fuel pump issue goes away. So the way you remove this lock core so that you can place it in this new ignition switch, put your key in, turn it to ignition, which is to the left. Take a paper clip or anything small in this in this hole right here. Push that hole in, you'll feel spring tension. Roll the lock back to hold it. It'll turn back past accessory. And you just slide it out like that. And with the lock back installed, let's see if the fuel pump kicks on. Still no fuel pump. pumps running now so there's still a loose connection somewhere i got spark plugs let's change those right now got a new set of auto lights all the plugs are changed So I have this 12 volt Carter style pump here. I've been dragging this thing around since like 2017. I bought it for my diesel and I just never used it. And then recently I almost threw that thing away because I moved my shop and I was like, oh, I'm never gonna use it. I'm glad I didn't because here we are. I hate to do this uh, and don't try this at home because I'm like, there's like sparks and gasoline, but I wanna see if this will pump fuel and 
I hate to do this, but I may have to wire an auxiliary pump that goes straight to a switch because to try to chase the wiring down on that is it's just a nightmare. Let's try this. Yeah, we're getting good flow there. Uh, now that I got new plugs in here and I've hooked this pump up, I'm going to put this in line and turn this on and see if it'll run just the way it is. Let's try to fire it up here. It's only going to run until that bowl is empty because I don't have the pump running. That pump's too much for this, I think. Uh, we may have to put a fuel regulator or something or a return, possibly. <laughs> And just checking on that tank repair I made with the right stuff. Uh, we're over 24 hours later and it is completely dry. Here's what those spark plugs looked like. This one here has a little bit of oil on it. I don't really know why, but if you look close, it looks like the last person that had this put uh, anaces on all the plugs, which is kind of cool. I've never seen that before. It's a good idea. And we're back on the dump truck project. So I took the pump apart and I actually got it to pump. There was a little spacer, I think, that it was not in the right place. So I just took that out of there because it didn't seem like it needed to be in there. I don't know. It didn't work with it in there and it works now without it. We're going to reinstall this and see if it'll pump fuel. Fuel pump's back installed. We'll hook up the wiring, push the tank in. Moment of truth here. That works. All right, we'll hook up the line and put the tank back and we'll try to fire this thing. Let's see if this thing starts again. Fuel pump's running and that filter's already full of fuel. And there's no fuel pouring out of the bowl up there. So... Um, I also changed out the plug on the old fuel pump and the way it was wired this is what was in there before but it had kind of a loose connection so i just wired a buck connector straight we'll build air in this thing and the whole reason i wanted to start this was to move it up to the shop to change the oil and change the spark plugs but spark plugs have been changed so all we got to do is change the oil I'm saying air brakes dumping is probably the coolest sound. Argue with me in the comments. Look at that. Big old filter. L30169. Let's see if we can go find a part for that. Got the new filter here. 1279 is the Napa part number. Let's throw this in and fill it up with oil. I think we're good there. Let's uh, fill this with oil. I don't know if it's showing up in camera, but it is right up over the full mark. We'll start this and it'll be perfect. We got a leaker. Darn it. I'll have to fix that. I damaged this gasket, so these are pretty much a one-time use. And the one that it came with is not big enough, so I'll have to either make one or find one. 
I bought some of this paper gasket stuff. It says it's rated for oil. I cut a nice circle out and got it installed. One thing I did is I put a little bit of grease on the gasket to hold it in place. And then I put this up very carefully, making sure it's even on all sides. Tighten the center nut down. So let's see if this thing leaks now. <laughs> calling that fixed we got good old pressure no leaks we'll give this thing a try All right, well, I'm gonna kinda end this video here. I definitely have plans for this in the future, work to do with it and work to do to it. Uh, so make sure you stick around for that. This uh, kinda just demonstrated getting home and that it does work. It definitely has some issues. It's old, it's rusty, but it is super cool. So uh, let's get on to the next job.